AB Calculus Note Card 40, Determine Concavity and Points of Inflection. This is the 40th video lesson in the series inspired by Stacy McMullen, formerly of the Dallas Independent School District, who developed this note card system. Determine concavity and POIs. Well, let's go ahead and define POI. POI is an acronym for Point of Inflection. I'm going to abbreviate inflection here. Uh, point of inflection. So let's talk about what a point of inflection is. A uh, point of inflection is a point on the graph of a function. And I'm going to draw a function here, something like this. Okay. And we'll call this function f of x. And the point of inflection happens where, as the graph starts out coming from the left, the graph is curved downward. And then the graph transitions to curving upward. And the place, the in-between place where the graph changes from concave down to, in this case, concave up. This is what's referred to as a point of inflection. And sometimes they, you just address the x value where the point of inflection occurs. To find the intervals of concavity for a function y, and sometimes this y will be written as f of x, as you've seen. Uh, find y double prime, and that's analogous to if you have an f function, f double prime. Then find where y double prime is equal to zero or y double prime is undefined. And this PPOI, okay, PPOI are possible or uh, potential points of inflection. So sometimes we'll see them written different ways or said different ways. Then we put these PPOIs on a number line and test a number within the intervals into Y double prime. And so if we have two PPOIs and we find these at numbers A and B, we go ahead and, and put in maybe y double prime on top and y below, and then we analyze the signs between these intervals, to the left of a, between a and b, and to the right of b. If y double prime is greater than zero, then y is concave up. If y double prime is less than zero, then y is concave down. And then finally, a point where the graph of the function has a tangent line and where the concavity changes. And when we say changes, we mean changes, changes signs. And we change signs from either positive to negative or negative to positive. That's where we have a point of inflection. So uh, finally, before working the problems, and we did start the analysis process on the prior note card video lesson, which was strictly on concavity. Now, we have three rows, and earlier we've done this where the F row for the original function, or the function F itself, we put plus, minus, up arrow, down arrow, and then up U for concave up, down U for concave down. And the row next lowest, we put plus or minus here, and then up arrow and down arrow. And then finally, in the F double prime, which is our second derivative, we put plus or minus. And these two top things here, concave up and concave down, correspond to f double prime 
being respectively plus and minus. And so we're going to use the analysis between these two things here to decide what's going on. Now to the problems. One, the graph of y equals 3x to the fourth power by 16x cubed plus 24x squared plus 48 is concave down for what intervals? Well, first of all, we're going to just pre-justify because we know what has to occur where a function is concave down, and that is we are concave down if y double prime is less than zero. So we're going to say, we're going to just make a statement. We'll say uh, y, function y, is concave down on and with these parentheses with a comma separating we're going to put in the interval notation for that interval and because y double prime is less than zero so now we just need to do our analysis to be able to fill in the blank and sometimes you can leave this wider in case there would be more than one interval where uh, the graph function is concave down. Anyway, first of all, we need to take y prime, and y prime is going to be 12x cubed, and we have minus 48x squared, and then we have plus... 48x. And to find concavity, we need to go to the double prime. So we take that second derivative. So we have a y double prime is equal to 36x squared minus 96x plus 48. Now if we set to make our analysis, y double prime equal to zero. And we're going to factor out our greatest common factor here in these terms. And I think that's going to be 12. So we put 12 times quantity 3x squared. And we put minus 8x, 12 times 8 is 96, plus 4. And then we can divide by 12, and we have remaining, remaining 0 equals uh, 3, I don't even need to put the parentheses here, right? 0 equals 3x squared minus 8x plus 4. And now we're going to go about factoring this. I'm going to go to the upper right, make our little x. And for this, A is equal to 3, B is equal to negative 8, and C is equal to 4. So on the top, using the X method, we put AC, and A times C is going to be 3 times 4, or 12. And B goes in the bottom, and B is going to be negative 8. And then we ask ourselves, uh, what number do we... Well, two numbers we multiply together equal 12, but add together equal negative 8. Well, those would be negative 2 and negative 6. And then we divide by A, and A being 3, we get negative 6 over 3 simplifying to negative 2. So what we get is Let me just write this here. We get uh, x minus 2 thirds times quantity x minus 2. And using the bottoms up method, we're going to simplify to uh, 3x minus 2 times quantity x minus 2. And finding the zeros, if we set, set this equal to 0, we have 
uh, 3x minus 2 is equal to 0, and we also have x minus 2 is equal to 0, and so we have x is equal to 2 thirds, and also x is equal to 2, and these values we label as our possible points of inflection. Okay. So now for the number line analysis, and for the number line analysis, we come and make a horizontal line. I'll do this right in the middle. Looks like we have enough room. And so we mark uh, two thirds and two. And we're going to put y double prime above this number line and y below. And we can use our factored form here to make an analysis. If we pick a number less than two-thirds, say zero, we get a negative times a negative or a positive. So we're going to be from negative infinity to two-thirds, we're going to be concave up. And then between two-thirds and two, we're going to have a like a positive times a negative or negative, and then greater than two, we're gonna have positive all the way, so positive, positive. So this is what our underlying analysis is going to show. And we refer to our chart back again, and where we have a, a plus sign for F Y double prime, we have concave up. Where we have a minus sign, we have concave down. We have a concave up for our finer inter interval, and we can see clearly by our chart that our blanks to be filled in are going to be uh, y is concave down on two thirds to two because y double prime is less than zero. So let's go ahead to our second problem. For f of x equals sine x plus 2 on the closed interval from 0 to 3 pi, determine the intervals where f of x is a, concave up and justify, and then b, points of inflection. So again, we're going to, uh, let's go pre-justify our intervals. We're going to say f, uh, f of x is concave up, that's what we're being asked to justify, on, we're going to have, uh, we're going to make an interval here. And I'm going to leave quite a bit of space in case we need to make more than one interval. And why is that? Because F double prime of X has to be greater than zero for concave up. So we've done our pre-justification, now we just go ahead and do our analysis. Now we're going to take the second derivative of f of x and in an earlier note card we had this Santa Claus note cone device for taking the derivative of sine and cosine. So the derivative of sine is cosine, just following the arrow. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of negative cosine is ne negative sine is negative cosine. And finally, the derivative of negative cosine is positive sine. So f prime of x is going to be equal to our first derivative of sine x, which is cosine x, and then uh, the derivative of the constant 2 just drops out, and then f double prime of x is equal to negative sine x. And to analyze what's going on, I'm going to make a drawing of a unit circle. Okay, so we have a unit circle. 
x and y coordinate plane. Okay, we have x, y, and then we're going around, and the angle measures zero here at, at the start and comes around half a circle, and we have a rotation of pi radians. We come to another half circle, and we get to two pi radians, a complete rotation, and another half rotation brings us to three pi. So this is what's going on in our circle. And so let's set f double prime of x equal to zero. So zero equals negative sine x. And so where is this going to occur? Where is zero going to be equal to negative sine x? Well, sine x is going to be is going to be equal to zero at angle zero. So we'll say x equals zero. Also, half rotation where x is equal to pi. And continuing to rotate again where x is equal to two pi. And then we make another half rotation where x is equal to three pi. So all these four x values are going to be PPOIs, possible points of inflection. And now we're going to come up uh, with a number line. You know, this number line, we're going to put zero or angles of zero, pi, two pi, and three pi. And then we're going to put f double prime above and f below and then analyze. Well, between zero and pi, the first interval we'll, we'll examine, we look at this negative sine x. Well, the sine of x will be positive, but since we have a negative sign out in front, that is going to reverse to a negative. So we're going to be concave down over that interval. And between pi and two pi, this lower half of the circle, the sine value is negative, but negative negative is positive. And then between two pi and three, it's going to be the same as between zero and pi. We're going to have a negative value here. And so we're going to be concave down from zero to pi, concave up from pi to two pi, and concave down again from 2 pi to 3 pi. And so we are concave up only on one interval, and that's going to be between pi to uh, 2 pi. And it's going to be, that's a wrong arrow for clarity. Okay, so that will be our uh, question part A, concave up. Now B, the points of inflection. Uh, for the points of inflection, we need an x and a y coordinate. So our uh, points of inflection is going to be the x value. Now for a point of inflection, we are changing concavity from negative to positive or from positive to negative. And we will have pi. And also, we will have another point of inflection where concavity changes from positive to negative at 2 pi. And then some output value. And before we put out what those are, we're going to pre, we're going to justify. We say um, f f of x has points of inflection at x equals pi, and also x equals two pi. 
because uh, F double prime changes, I'm going to write below, changes from positive to, to negative or from negative to positive. And we don't have for zero and three pi points of inflection because our function is not defined for less than zero or greater than three pi. And now to find what those points are, we're going to make the input where we find f of pi. We're going to plug in pi for x. It's going to be equal to sine of pi plus 2. Well, that's going to be equal to sine of pi is 0. So we have 0 plus 2 is equal to 2. So that's going to be one point of inflection, pi comma 2. And then we're going to have f of, of 2 pi is going to be equal to sine of 2 pi plus 2. And that's also going to be 0 plus 2 equals 2. So that's our second point of inflection, uh, 2 pi comma 0, 2. I said 0, 2 pi comma 2. So there we have our points of inflection. Next, problem three. Determine the intervals where g of x equals the cube root of 2x minus 1 is concave down and concave up and state the points of inflection. Again, we're going to pre-justify. We're going to say uh, g of x is concave down on that interval, which we don't know yet, because g double prime is less than zero. And then we have g of x is concave up on a interval shall be named later because g double prime of x is greater than zero. And then the points of inflection, we're going to state this. I'm going to just start writing it right now where it says uh, g of x has a point of inflection at x equals, we don't know yet, blank, but we know the, the reasoning because uh, g double prime of x changes from blank to blank. Okay, one's going to be positive and negative. We don't know which one's going to be which yet. So now let's go ahead and, and fill in these blanks, and then we can figure out the uh, what the point of inflection is after we figure out where. Okay. I'm going to rewrite g of x from the, change it from the rational radical form here to the rational form, which is going to be 2x minus 1 to the one-third power. Okay, next, we're going to take, uh, we're on our way to find the second derivative. Let's find the first derivative first. So g prime of x is equal to, using the power rule, we're going to take this one-third out front and then multiply it by 2x, point 2x minus 1, and we're going to take one third minus one, so we're going to get to the negative two thirds power. 
and times using the chain rule, the derivative of this inside, which is two. And let me just rewrite this. G prime of X is equal to, we're gonna have uh, two thirds times 0.2x minus one to the negative two thirds power. So just consolidating those two. Okay, next, g double prime of x is equal to, we're gonna multiply by negative two thirds. So I'll put negative two thirds out front and then times this two thirds here And then times this quantity uh, 2x minus 1. And then we're going to take negative 2 thirds minus 1, which is going to be negative 5 thirds. And then we're going to multiply finally by the derivative of this inside, which is 2. And now combining all this together and uh, getting this back into a radical form, g to the prime of x is equal to, we have negative 2 times 2 times 2 all in the numerator, so we're going to get negative 8. And then that's going to be over 3 times 3, which is 9. And then we have also uh, this 0.2x minus 1 to the negative 5 thirds power. So we're going to have also down here the uh, cube root of uh, quantity 2x minus 1 to the fifth power. Now to find our PPO i's, we're going to set, uh, we're going to replace g double prime of x with 0. So we have 0 is equal to uh, negative 8 over 9 cube root of quantity 2x minus 1 to the fifth power, and we should be able to see that there is no solution to this equation in that there's no number that x can be to ever make this equation equal to zero. So now we're going to have to uh, check for where the derivative is undefined. And to do that, we're going to set our denominator of this second derivative equal to zero. So we're going to say 0 is equal to uh, negative 9. And one thing I had to do with that negative, I had to realize that we retain this negative sign here. That's going to be crucial in this case, because if we forget that, we're going to be in trouble. So we have uh, 2x, by like 2x minus 1 to the fifth power. And then if we solve for x, we should be able to see that if we strip things away and divide by negative 9 and so forth, we're going to end up with 0 is equal to 2x minus 1. And solving for x, x is equal to 1 half. And this is going to be x is equal to 1 half. That is going to be our, our, our possible our potential point of inflection. And so now we can go to a number line and we put one half here and then we're going to put g double prime above and g below and then just see what happens if we plug in zero for instance and we can take this original one, if we plug in zero, we're going to have a negative divided by a negative, which will be positive. Okay, so we are concave up in this interval. And if we pick a number bigger than one half, uh, we're going to have this negative on top divided by a positive or negative. So we're going to be concave down on this, this interval here. So g of x is concave down on uh, one half 
greater than one half to infinity because g double prime is less than zero. And we're going to be concave up on negative infinity to uh, greater than negative infinity to one half because g double prime is greater than zero. And we have a point of inflection that x equals one half, filling in the blank, because g double prime changes from positive, filling in that blank, to negative. And what is the actual point of inflection? Well, we know we have our x coordinate for that point of inflection is one half. And what is our y coordinate going to be? Well, g of one half is equal to cube root of two times one half minus one. Well, this two times one half that that simplifies to one, so we're going to be equal to zero. So our point of inflection is going to be the coordinate pair one comma zero. So that will be all our answers for number three. The last one, four, an equation of the line tangent to y equals x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2 at its point of inflection is blank. Well, we have different things to consider here. What we're going to do to find our relative points of analysis to, is to find our second derivative. So y prime is equal to 3x squared plus 6x. And y double prime is equal to 6x plus 6. And to find where y double prime is equal to 0, we say 0 is equal to factoring out of 6. We have 6 can quantity x plus 1. So solving for x, x equals negative 1 this is going to be our possible point of inflection. And this thing assumes you have a point of inflection, so by that analysis you already are pretty sure you have one, so we're going to put negative 1 nevertheless here. Negative 1. Uh, we're going to put y double prime above this line and y below and to the left of negative 1 we're going to have That'll just be negative. So we're going to be concave down. And then to the right of negative 1, if we put in 0, we're going to get positive or concave up. So we'll say that uh, y has a uh, point of inflection at x equals negative 1 because y double prime changes from negative to positive. Okay. So, uh, our, we need for a equation of tangent line, we need a point and we need a slope. And our point is going to be starting out with our x coordinate of negative 1 and our slope is going to be m sub t, we're going to call that equals. And then our equation, our tangent line is going to be y minus y1 equals m, I'll put m sub t, times quantity x minus x1. And so we know this point is going to be, we have x1 is that one, y1, which we're going to find out. Next, we're going to find 
y value at x equals negative 1. And to do that, we put in negative 1 for this x here. So we get negative 1 cubed. We get plus 3 times negative 1 squared. And then plus 2. So we're going to get negative 1 plus 3 plus 2. That's going to be equal to 4. So that's the second piece of our coordinate pair. And finally, we're going to need to find the slope at that tangent line. So we're going to use this y prime function here. So here's our y prime function. I'm going to bring it down right here. We'll say y prime of negative 1 is equal to 3 times negative 1 squared plus 6 times negative 1, which equals 3 minus 6 equals negative 3. And that's going to be our slope for our tangent line, m sub t. So m sub t equals negative 3. So the equation of our tangent line is going to be y minus y1, which is going to be 4. And that's going to be equal to m sub t, which is negative 3, times x minus x1, which is minus negative 1, which is plus 1. And then it, if we were to continue to solve this, I'm going to show you why I'm going to do this later. We're going to get y, solve for y, we're going to get y equals a negative 3x plus 1. And so, um, previous to this uh, video lesson, I graphed the original function here. And the tangent line at the point of inflection, which we just calculated, let's see if I can find what that is here. There we go. We're going to say it was negative 3x plus 1. Graph that. And see, that's what that tangent line looks like. It's like the tangent line at the point of inflection. I hope this has been helpful to you. Good luck, and thanks for viewing.